the first wave and second wave and pretty much every other wave of free agency is, is done for the NFL at this point. Now, yes, there's still a lot of remaining players that could do a lot of teams a lot of good, but uh, there are five right now that I think uh, there that could definitely do a lot of favors for some teams around the NFL. So today we're giving you our top five remaining NFL free agents that uh, definitely need to get snatched up before the regular season or at least – need to be given the opportunity. I think it all starts uh, with uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Yes, I understand that he is a guy that, quite honestly, you know, we don't really know what to expect anymore. I mean, just last time he played for uh, the Rams uh, as well uh, as I don't even remember. I mean, that's how long it has been. Like, he's an absolute stud. He is. I mean, we'll all always remember the Odell Beckham Jr. catch. But, uh, yes, it's been a little while since he has uh, been able to step foot into the uh, arena, if you will. Uh, he obviously uh, started out with Cleveland there and then went over to the Rams there in 2021 won a Super Bowl. And with both teams caught 44 passes for 537 yards at five touchdowns like he is obviously still got very much uh, a lot left in the tank and I do think he's a guy that quite honestly you know if he goes to the right team uh, a team like the Chiefs maybe a team like the Jets if they can get Aaron Rodgers um, you know a, a Super Bowl contending team maybe even the Bills I think would be a really good fit for a guy like uh, Odell Beckham Jr. because he's clearly still got a lot left he's not that number one wide receiver anymore but he could definitely be a, 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 a dynamite number three maybe even a number two but for right now Odell Beckham Jr. is uh, definitely a guy that needs to be snatched up and I don't think he's going to be that expensive I mean we're talking about a guy that probably you could probably sign anywhere from the six to eight million dollar range like if we're uh, being perfectly honest about this whole thing so you know he's an absolute stud he continues to bring it and uh, you know he's going to always be a legend for that catch like we've already established that but uh, Odell Beckham Jr. definitely needs to be on the radar for uh, the majority of these NFL teams uh, moving forward uh, now top free agent number two uh, Dalton Reisner I think he's a guy that you know when you take a look at all of the offensive linemen in this draft like after uh, I want to say Osiris Torrance, um, you know, there's a definitely a drop off. Yes, I know Steve Avila is going to be there a little bit later on, but there, there's definitely a drop off when you get into, um, you know, the the second, the later second to the third and fourth, fifth rounds. Uh, you know, Chandler Zavala is the only guy that off the top of my head, I'm co I'm confident in having Cody Mox, another guy that I think um, a lot of people are sleeping on. He's going to be a fantastic guard in the NFL, but overall, uh, th there's not a lot of great things going on. But uh, you, if you look at Dalton Reisner, he's a guy that quite honestly uh, has been very impressive. Uh, uh, and I think he is a guy that still has a lot left in the tank, too. So uh, 2022, yes, took a little bit of a step back. But let's be real. Everybody in that Broncos offense uh, took a step back. But uh, Dalton Reisner played a total of 967 snaps, did have one penalty, uh, and overall did allow three sacks, but uh, I'm not that worried about it. Like I said, he's a guy that continually uh, really is the, or was a big part of that Broncos offensive line, posted a 72.6 PFF pass blocking grade, as well as a 53.4 run blocking grade. I think in the right system, he can still do a lot of things. I think we're, we're definitely thinking uh, he could be like a Joe Tooney type impact, uh, Joe Th Joe Thune type impact, excuse me. So I'm really excited for Dalton Reisner. Um, you know, now the question is, you know, where did he go? I think the teams like the Raiders, teams like the Vikings, definitely make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, the, and there's also a lot of other teams all around the NFL. Teams uh, like the Seahawks, teams like the Cardinals. Uh, you know, uh, there's always room for a, a really good guard of the NFL. It doesn't matter who you are. So uh, Dalton Reisner definitely needs to be in consideration uh, for being that dude and being the new starting left guard uh, for a, a respective team. Uh, top free agent number three. I think it's pretty simple Puna Ford this dude's a stud uh, Puna Ford I loved him ever since he came out of Texas dude just like stands in the middle and he absolutely gets it done uh, because honestly quite like he's only like 5'10 like 3'10 315 but I mean literally low man wins in uh, end of the NFL really and uh, the line of scrimmage you just love Puna Ford uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest you know uh, I will uh, be the first to admit that he's a guy that quite honestly didn't exactly get it done uh, for a couple of different reasons I think honestly I don't know that he was in the right scheme uh, with the Seahawks I felt like he was a guy uh, that just never really got there because of the specific scheme he was in and the Seahawks defense was awful let's the, we're just gonna uh, go ahead and uh, be honest about the whole thing but uh, yeah, you like what you see. So uh, with the Seahawks this year, uh, had a career height of three sacks, 35 total tackles. And yes, it really wasn't what he had done in the years past. In the years past, he had been one of the best run defenders in the entire league. But obviously, again, 
not in the right scheme. Don't think he was in the right defense. Uh, but I think he's a guy that if you put him uh, in the place he's supposed to be, he can do wonders. So a uh, total of five quarterback hits and 14 hurries. Uh, did have 22 pressures on the season and a PFF run defense grade of a 52. Uh, did improve on his pass rush like we talked about. It had over a, a 60.0 PFF grade and a 56.2 overall PFF grade. So, yes, I know uh, after having three dominant years in the NFL or four, excuse me, dominant years uh, in the NFL, having kind of a down year doesn't necessarily do him good. But I I still think he can do, go to a, a really good team that is definitely in the mix. Maybe not be a starter to start things off with, be a guy that you bring in kind of like Shelby Harris uh, just to kind of start things off with. But then uh, when he can really get his feet into the ground and be that guy again uh, in terms of shutting down the run, I think he'll find a place in the NFL. And I think so. This, this might be a one-year prove-it deal, but then after that I think he's going to sign probably a three- or four-year uh, deal, deal Excuse me, worth, you know, eight to ten million dollars a deal because he is that dude he's an absolute stud uh, on the interior and you got to give him his respect uh top free agent number four that i think a lot of teams need to really keep an eye on is ben uh, neiman excuse me it might be neiman i don't know how to pronounce his name but uh ben uh ben n there we go ben n is an absolute stud for a lot of different reasons now He's not your guy that's going to go out and get over 100 tackles. He's just not. This last year, it was uh, his best year in the NFL with the Arizona Cardinals. Had 70 total tackles. Had a pass defense. No sacks, but he did have a 70.2 pass coverage grade and a 60, uh, 67.6 PFF run defense grade. So... I really feel like the value is with Ben Neiman. So if you want to go with a guy that can cover, that could do well in the run game as well, again, not going to be a guy that changes the game by any means, but he's a steady linebacker. If you're looking to rebuild a defense and bring him in, he can do a lot of different things. I loved him when he was at uh, Kansas City. Loved him with the, when he was with the Cardinals. I thought he was pretty much a one-for-one -one replacement for Jordan Hicks uh, coming in and Ben Neiman. I think he's going to be cheap, but he's also going to be very effective and have one of the uh, better uh, overall deals for value for a respective NFL team, and, and teams definitely need to keep an eye on him. And then finally, the top free agent, uh, number five for me is, uh, yes, it's cornerback uh, Marcus Peters. Like, it's kind of a shock to me that a guy uh, that was as good as Marcus Peters was for as lo that long, is he's still unsigned, which, again, I'll, I'll – preface by saying and again i'll extend the olive branch he's not the guy who he was uh when he first came to the nfl clearly clearly he is not a shutdown corner anymore however he's still a very good player still a very good player that i think an nfl team he's kind of i, I don't want to say he's, he's definitely not in the same situation as a guy like patrick peterson i think he's still got a lot left in the tank but um i definitely think he's a guy that you know you don't want to necessarily leave him on, a, on an island anymore because i still think there's some things that he can do uh in in terms of uh, he might get burned like you need to be able to make sure he does have a little bit of help but he's still a very good player for you uh, and he's probably better than what most teams have uh, at the cornerback position so uh, last year 47 total tackles had a sack and an interception as well as a run defense pff grade of a 57 and a 69.5 pff pass coverage grade so marcus peters one of those guys he just continues to to be amazing and i honestly think that uh, you know with teams that have needs at corner which it's uh, one of the most important positions on an nfl team other than quarterback i know i'm gonna get some of you in the comment section um, but he's one of those guys that uh, you can't go wrong with signing he definitely deserves uh, you know a two to three year deal worth in the neighborhood of i would say six to twelve million dollars a year more more likely six to eight let's be real here uh, i think that uh, with how the cornerback market is going this year you know he's probably going to get that six to eight million hopefully he does he deserves it all uh, and i think he's a guy that teams really need to keep an eye on no matter how old he is he can still get it done for you in a lot of different ways for your defense uh, but that is it that is our top five remaining nfl free agents let us know what you guys think make sure you guys like and subscribe down below leave a like and a comment it helps people find the show we greatly appreciate all the support from you guys you guys are all truly awesome we love every single one of you down in the description below you'll find all of our social media platforms so give us a like and a follow there also remember to give us a listen and sub on itunes and finally if you have anything else you'd like us to cover send us an email at the sports bp at yahoo.com or put in the comment section down below and we would love to cover but let us know what you guys think about our top five remaining NFL free agents.